About a month ago, I recorded a video about SSD lifespan in the Apple M1. Like many other tech reviewers, we'd noticed that the M1 utilizes the SSD for memory swapping quite a bit more than the Intel Macs. Now, there's nothing unusual about using the SSD for swap space. All computers do this, but if this happens a lot, it's using up the life of your SSD because SSDs can only have data written to them a finite number of times. This wouldn't be such a problem, but Apple, in its infinite wisdom, has elected to solder the SSD to the logic board, so there's no way for you to replace it when it fails. So, in the video, what I showed was how modern SSDs are actually very reliable, and that even with this increased swapping activity, most users won't need to worry. The SSD will still outlast other components in the machine. And I stand by that conclusion, but we're now seeing a different issue. Some users are reporting huge amounts of data being written to the SSD. What's going on? And do you need to be worried about it? If you do a search on Google for M1 SSD, you'll be met with a disturbing number of tech news posts, all suggesting that there's a big problem with these machines. YouTube comments sections and web forums are full of panicked M1 users. And Apple, of course, has said nothing at all on the issue. So, in this video, what I want to do is break down the issue in a logical manner. First, we'll look at the possible reasons, and then we'll consider how long an SSD can actually last. And folks, we need your help. We've put together a survey to collect usage data from Mac owners. So, if you have an M1 Mac, whether you're having issues with it or not, can you share your data with us? There's a link to the survey in the description, and Pete's put together a quick how-to video on our podcast channel. So if you don't know how to get the numbers for your SSD, uh, again, check out that video linked in the description. So let's consider the problem. And first, we need to address all of those stories that we just mentioned that come up in the Google results. If you look at the articles, what you'll find is that most of them are pointing at the same few social media posts and forum threads. And this has the effect of skewing the problem out of proportion. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying that there isn't an issue, but we don't know how widespread the issue is. A few negative reports that are repeated over and over again is still just a few negative reports. And if you spend some time diving into those forum threads, you'll find users who are reporting no problems at all. Uh, there are others who are reporting problems, which are clearly due to the way the machine is being used, rather than an actual fault. And there's even some Intel Mac users who are also reporting high data rights to their SSD. Incidentally, if that's you, if you've got an Intel Mac and you're having problems, please also add your data to our survey. Now, something else we can't rule out is the possibility that the reporting software that's based on the smart monitoring in the drives is misinterpreting data. Different vendors can implement smart data in different ways, and that can cause software to report data incorrectly. Uh, have a look at this article from Crucial's website that points out exactly this issue. Now, I guess it's possible that Apple uses more than one vendor for its SSD chips, and that the same piece of software could therefore interpret the data from two different vendors differently. And maybe the SSD controller itself or the firmware is responsible for these inconsistencies. Or maybe some M1 units have an actual hardware fault. Or perhaps it's a software bug in the OS or with certain apps. If we think logically about this, Apple has got many years of experience engineering SSDs. And if you go searching Google for examples of SSD failures in older Macs, you'll struggle to find many. These drives are reliable, and Apple's engineers do know what they're doing. And you'd like to think that they tested these machines thoroughly before releasing them to the wild. You did test them, didn't you, Apple? Let's assume that the smart data is correct, though. Let's uh, assume the software is working fine and that some owners' SSDs are actually getting hammered with data rights. These owners will typically fall into one of two camps. Our first camp is users who are doing things with their M1 Mac that it just isn't well suited for. Take the entry-level 8GB MacBook Air and compare it to the previous Intel MacBook Air. The M1 has got way more performance on offer. It's even got performance to rival or sometimes beat the 8-core 16-inch MacBook Pro in some areas. And so, as a result, some people have got a little carried away. I've seen YouTube influencers telling people that all they need is an 8GB M1 MacBook Air. They're actually recommending these machines for heavy workloads like 4K video editing things that you would never have dreamed of doing with that previous Intel MacBook Air. But the thing is, you can do these things with the M1. 
And so in some cases, we're actually seeing professional and enthusiast users who are ditching their Intel machines to get this entry-level Mac, and they're expecting it to be able to handle the same workloads. And there is a cost. The 8 gigabyte M1 especially will handle these workloads by swapping like crazy to the SSD. 8 gigs of RAM shared between CPU and GPU is just not enough to do 4K video editing. And nobody would have seriously considered that before the M1, so why all of a sudden is it okay now? Have a look at Intel's white paper on the subject and notice how much RAM they recommend for serious 4K video work. Yep, 32 gigabytes. And conventional wisdom is that you also need a GPU with 8 gigs of dedicated video RAM. So, no surprise then for some people who are using their M1 Max for very heavy workloads that they're seeing these high amounts of data being written to the SSD. I mentioned two camps. Camp two is users who aren't doing anything out of the ordinary, and yet they're still seeing high amounts of data being written to the SSD. And this is a concern. I've chatted with some of you guys in the comments section and clearly this is a real issue and naturally you guys want answers. This sort of abnormal and unexplained behaviour is what I would call a fault, most likely a software fault or bug that affects some machines or some specific applications, uh, but it could also perhaps be a hardware fault of some description. Whatever it is, if you think your Mac has got a fault, you should report it to Apple support. Now we've got three of these M1 Macs, and two of them we've used fairly extensively for testing purposes. We've got the 16 gig M1 Mac Mini and a base model 8 gigabyte MacBook Air. And we've done all manner of video editing, audio production and benchmark tests with these machines, in addition to actually using them for day-to-day -day work. And four months later, what do we see? Now, according to Smart Monitor Tools, that 16 gig Mac Mini has written just shy of 1.3 terabytes to its SSD. And that's pretty much identical to my PC workstation running Windows 10, which has had a similar amount of use. The 8 gig MacBook Air has written 5.3 terabytes in the same period. Since both machines have had broadly similar use, I think this is a clear example of what will happen on that 8 gigabyte model if you're trying to run professional workloads. That said, I don't think either of those machines is exhibiting abnormal or faulty behaviour. So if you're happy to check your data for your M1 and add it to our survey, we'd be really grateful. And once we've collected a meaningful amount of results, we'll share that with you on the channel. And again, if you're not sure how to get the data from your machine, have a look at our how-to video that's linked in the description. But now let's just spend a little bit of time considering SSD lifespan. Uh, many users are focusing in on the 150 terabytes written figure as the potential lifespan of their SSD. And in fact, this is the figure I used as an example in my last video. And that's because it's the published and warranted amount of data that can be written to a 250 gigabyte Samsung 970 Evo SSD, uh, presumably an SSD of similar quality to what we'll find in these M1 Macs. But let's not misunderstand these values. 150 terabytes is the amount of data that Samsung will cover under warranty. It doesn't mean that your SSD will automatically die when it reaches that figure. You could think of it like a warranty on a car. The manufacturer may offer a 3 year or 60,000 mile warranty, but with good maintenance your car will last a good deal longer than that, both in time and in mileage. And your SSD is the same. It has self-maintenance features to spread the wear across the cells on the drive, and it even has spare cells that it can bring into play. So we'd expect it to outlast this minimum warranty period. Six years ago, the tech report tested a number of SSDs to destruction, and all of them went way beyond the manufacturer's warranted data write figure. There was a humble Samsung 840 which managed to get past 800 terabytes written. And that's pretty impressive for a 250 gigabyte drive with a warranted lifespan of just 72 terabytes written. Now, as we said, that was six years ago. SSD reliability has come a long way in that six years. And sure, it's just one test. But if you do your research, you'll find that this isn't unusual. SSDs are considerably more reliable than spinning hard disks ever were. And bear in mind also that we don't know what the TBW figure is for Apple's SSDs. They don't publish that. And remember that the figure itself increases with capacity. Double the capacity of the drive and you double that TBW figure, usually. So when you look at your smart data, you'll notice this percentage used figure. 
Assuming the smart data is being reported correctly, this figure represents the SSD vendor's estimate of the overall life of the drive that's been used up. The figure is an integer or whole number value, and in the case of our M1 Max, it shows 0%. On our 8 gig MacBook Air, if the lifespan of the drive is 150 terabytes, then with 5.3 terabytes written, we should be at 3.5%. And if the smart data is rounded to the nearest whole number, then it should be showing us 4%. And the smart data for percentage use can actually go beyond 100%. In other words, it's expected that drives will continue past this estimated value. Even if the lifespan of the drive was just 150 terabytes written, at this rate, it would take our M1 MacBook Air nine and a half years to get to that figure. And it wouldn't surprise me if the drive is actually good for more than a petabyte. Now, can we trust this data? Well, this is why we want you to fill in our survey. We should be able to quickly see if there's a consistent pattern between the data units written and the percentage used, and that will help us get a feel for the likely lifespan of these drives. Now, we could talk about this in much more detail for a long time, because there are many more things that I've discovered in my research, but Pete and I will be discussing those in our next podcast. Please, help us collect this data and get to the bottom of the issue. Uh, maybe consider sharing this video and the survey link with friends and family. And please consider subscribing to this and to our podcast channel so that you can catch up with all of the updates. Uh, I hope you found this video useful and maybe I did enough to earn a thumbs up or a thumbs down if that's your thing. But in any case, I hope to see you again soon for some more geekery.